Okay, uh, good morning everyone for turning up for this uh, tutorial on social psychology meets social computing, uh, state of the arts and future directions. Uh, my name is Saurav. I'm from NTU, a faculty uh, in College of Computing and Data Science. Uh, this tutorial will be given by Hui Li also, who is from CDN University, a faculty member there. Inning Zhao is a, is a PhD student in NTU. And Annabelle is a psychologist who worked with us on various issues related to uh, psychology theories. Um, she won't be presenting here, but she was also part of uh, the design of this tutorial. So let me start with data in, in social computing. So many of these data is is actually related to humans or produced by humans, right? Many of the solutions we design are actually directly consumed by humans. So naturally people or individuals or group of humans are at the center of any social computing. So these solutions need to be cognizant of the influence of behaviors of interacting individuals, okay? So here's some examples of social data. You can see this particular example is during the COVID times. They're talking about vaccines. And one of the thing the, uh, it's been, they have been talking about that the booster effectiveness against infection is particular wanes after just four weeks and almost disappears after eight weeks. So kind of misinformation gets propagated through social media, which is a very prevalent problem. Nowadays, um, and this is another post on Russia is winning the war in Ukraine. Probably in another ten months, all of Ukraine will be liberated. And this was posted in March twenty seven, last year. Okay, so humans are generating this data, even in the context of bots who are generating the the bots are designed by humans. So essentially, data reflects what human thinks and reflects their behaviors and so on. Okay, and uh, there, is a, there is a study which shows that when the news is fake, it attracts more attention. And fake news spreads six times faster than actual news, right? So we all know that influence spreads through social networks, but some information spreads much faster than others. In, and this is particularly true for fake news. Here's an example of the previous e example of social data I showed it to you, a social post. And you can imagine that, let's say U4 is the one who created this post. And then this information we know will spread through the links in the social network. Right, so people will read this and they may sh share it with their friends and connections and followers, and then they will read, like, and share, and so on. So this is how information in general spreads, and this includes fake news as well. And this information influences people and their behaviors. Right, so you can imagine when you first started this, you have these are the people who are influenced by this information. Okay, now, if you look into the content of what these users are writing, let's say, for example, in this case, um, you can see that U5, U3, U2, and U7, they all reacted to this particular post. U5 agreed with it, U3 also agreed with it, but then U7 and U2 says, I don't think so. So they don't agree that this particular post is correct. Okay, so now there could be various reasons for that. For example, U3 may not have any idea about the Omicron virus as such. But U3 looks into uh, what other people are saying and then just confirms to that, right? So we are essentially dealing with humans here. They are posting, they are reacting, they are commenting. And so what role can psychology theory plays 
in, let's say in this case of modeling information diffusion, right? I mean, surely we cannot be designing techniques and platforms without understanding the way a group of interacting humans behaves in this context and interact. So the goal of this tutorial is to design social, is to basically review and talk, talk about design social computing solutions that are informed by theories from social psychology. We focus on social influence because that's a, a topic of social computing that has attracted attention in the context of social psychology informed design. So you're thinking at a very broad level, you have a social computing framework and these frameworks are interacted by end users. This framework deals with data that are generated by humans, right? So psychology theories are at play implicitly. And we want to review a bunch of works which has been done in this context. These are very early works. This field is very open. There are a lot of problems you can solve, right? And it has not adequately got attention. Although it is an important thing to work on, right? So this is the focus of our tutorial. So here's an overview of the tutorial content. I'm going to introduce you psychology theory informed design and some background on psychology theories, right? So set you up on theories that are actually used in social computing. And then Ening will continue with psychology theory informed design for diffusion models. And then Hui Li will continue with psychology theory informed design of social influence. And then finally, I'll wrap up with future directions. Okay, so that's the structure of our uh, tutorial. Now, I start with a very basic concept is theory. And I'm talking about theory in general, not specific to computer science theory. Right, because we are talking about psychology theories and then naturally the understanding of theory. So theory is a science, a scientific theory is a testable explanation for a broad set of facts or observations. So this is different from the way people informally use this word theory. Okay, in theory, we should do this or something like that, which is more like speculation or hunch. So you're talking about what is formally, what is the theory or scientific theory. And it has two attributes, two key attributes, the power to explain the facts and the ability to be tested. So when we talk about psychology theory, we're talking about science. Okay, they have the power to explain the facts and the ability to be tested, they have been tested. Okay. So let me start with, now highlight you the problem of a pure computer science theory based social computing solutions, which is predominantly the case in social computer literature. Right. So classical computer science based solution focuses primarily on computing resource costs. Right. That's what we optimize. Time, space, accuracy, whatever you talk about. They don't deal with cognitive and social biases in humans. Right, not deliberately, very often. Right. For example, conformity is a classic behavior of humans. It has been widely tested, very accepted behavior in psychology textbooks. However, we do not consider much on conformity theories when we are designing something which involves group of interacting individuals, very often. But what conformity can do, for example, in the context of influence spread is that it can promote or block the spread, which has nothing to do with the topology of the network. It is human behavior. So it, naturally it might impact the prediction accuracy of these systems, right? So our focus is on psychology theory informed solution where we make the modeling of social computing problems and solutions human behavior sensitive, in addition to computer science theory. So 
this basically complements the theories in computer science. Okay. So we introduced this paradigm called theory informed design, especially in the context of psychology theory informed design, where design of social computing solutions are informed by theories from psychology, in addition to theories from CS. Okay, and the reason being very clear that data in social computing frameworks are related to humans consumed by humans. Humans are at the center. Right. So our focus is not talking about social computing problems that has rich computer science theories. We are not reviewing those solutions. There are many very good, excellent surveys and tutorials on that over the past years. We are focusing on techniques that have used psychology theories, social psychology theories in its design. Okay, that subset is much smaller. So why are we focusing on social psychology? One of the reason is that human behavior. Humans adapt their behavior to the demands of the social situation. So how a person behaves in a classroom is very different from how they present in another setting. And this is very well tested in psychology. In new or ambiguous settings, we take cues from the behavior of others in that setting. And we'll elaborate a little bit more during when we talk about conformity theories. So social psychology is a branch of psychology that studies the behavior of individuals or groups in the context of particular situations. So they always consider the context. So if we now con connect this, this concept of social psychology theories with social computing, you can see that human-related data actually implicitly or explicitly may contain cues of human behavior. Right? So it's not explicit. They don't say that, okay, I am now confirming to this. But Looking into the data might give you an idea that, oh, well, these, this particular group of users are conforming to certain leader. Right, so any social computing framework that, so we, we think that any social computing framework that do not consider it may not be so effective in practice when you are actually dealing with real people. So let me now start with some background on psychology theories because I presume that many of the audience may not have this background. Okay, And the background comes by, I've been working on this for a while and talking by, I, I basically read about psychology and I also talk to people, faculty members and researchers in this area and then uh, want to summarize the relevant theories that is necessary for this tutorial. So very many of these contexts you will see later is coming from this textbook, Zimbardo's Psychological Code Concept. This is a classic, very good textbook. If you're interested in this field, you can get it online free. Okay, so it talks about various aspects of psychology, including social psychology. So we started with a very basic question. What is psychology in the first place as a field? So as a field, there are many specialties. It is essentially a science of behavior and mental processes of the brain. So the science of psychology is very objective. So it is based on objective, verifiable evidence. It's not just opinions of some experts and authorities. So it is a science. What to note is that it includes not only mental processes, but also behaviors. Okay, so it covers internal mental processes that we observe indirectly, thinking, feeling, desires, or external that is very evident from talking and smiling. And, you know, you like some post, that is a very explicit evidence of you like something. Okay. 
there are three ways of doing psychology. First is the, the experimental psychology where they perform most of the research that creates new psychological knowledge. Then there are education, educated psychology, focus more exclusively on teaching, but they may do some limited amount of research also. What is interesting to us is applied psychologists. Use the knowledge developed from experimental psychologists to take to tackle human problems of all kinds. So we are looking at not inventing new psychology theories, rather the knowledge developed by social psychologists or experimental social psychologists, well-known theory that stood test of time to tackle social computing problems. Okay. Just to note that not to not to mix up with psychology and psychiatry. Psychiatry, psychiatry is very different. Psychiatry is a medical specialty. It's not part of psychology at all. Almost all psych psychiatrists treat mental disorders. They hold doctor of medicine degrees. They have specialized training in treatment of mental and behavioral problems, typically with drugs. So we are not talking about this. Okay, psychology is much broader field from brain function to social interactions. It also includes mental well-being to mental disorder, but it's much broader. And most of the psychologist training is not medical training. So now I'm going to highlight you something called six perspectives of psychology. Biological, cognitive, behavioral, developmental, social psychology, social, cultural, and whole person. What is it about? Each perspective offers its own unique explanations of human behavior. How human behaviors can be explained by one or more of these perspectives. And this is the tool to understand human behavior. So each perspective is an important tool in their toolbox for understanding human behaviors. And this is well tested. You can get it in any psychology textbook. Okay, what's coming out from this sixth perspective, what is the general consensus among many of these psychologists is that they all play key roles in developing a holistic understanding of human behaviors. Many of these perspectives can be applied to any single behavior, but rarely just one is sufficient to adequately explain the behavior. So you might need multiple perspectives to fully understand the causes of human beings. So somebody is commenting something which you find is biased or unusual or not factual. You will probably need more than one perspective to fully understand that, the cause behind that. Okay. So our focus is social cultural perspective. Because um, informally, you can understand that who could deny the, that people exert powerful influence on each other. So social cultural perspective is places the idea of social influence at the center stage, where social influence is a very key topic in social computing. And what does it say is that the social and cultural situation in which a person is embedded can sometimes overpower all the factors that influence his behaviors. And um, if some of you may know that a classic experiment which was done in the long time ago was the Stanford prison experiments. We show that. That you take the human out from one situation or to another and their behaviors can radically change. So here's I'm giving an example of first look at it. So on the top left, you can see the social network structure. Like you, say, you can imagine this is a Twitter group of users. And then this is the Omicron news, which U4 started it, and it spreads through its network and follows. Right. Now, focus on U3. U3 may not have any clue about 
vaccine details or Omicron? Yutri looks into the comments of others, and Yutri may have high regards of U5 or U4. And so when U5 agrees, you see also say, yes, I think so too. And you can, you can imagine this behavior is not unusual in human setting. This is actually what psychology th psychologists explain using conformity theory, which we'll cover later. Okay, so that comment, I think it's true, is actually telling you about U3's behavior. Right. And you can you can extrapolate from here. Let's say you two, instead of saying I don't think so, confirms to it again and says I think so true. Then you two will spread this news. So your influence of this news will spread further. But you two in this case says I don't think so, it blocks it. Regardless of the topology of the network. Right, so human behavior plays a critical role in spreading of this news. And this, of course, there's no systematic study yet, but you couldn't think about that fake news spread faster, it's maybe due to all the psychological aspects of human behavior. One of the important thing in this context is the power of the system. Power that creates and maintains certain specific situations. And many psychologists, social psychologists, theory have shown that uh, the power of the situation can pressure ordinary people to commit horrible acts. Very normal people, very friendly, on another setting, very nice person, but take them out, put it in a different system, and they might commit horrible acts. So understanding human behaviors needs understanding at three levels, the individual dispositions, the power of the situation, and power of the systems. So what these are? So of course, naturally, individual plays a role. Every individual is different. Whether you confirm to something or not depends on you as well, right? But the next level which plays an important role is power of the situation, the environment that creates situation that influence behaviors. Different situations, same information, same individual may react differently. And the third one, the system shapes situation which in turn affect behavior. So the entire system you are, you are in. So if you're in, let's say in an academia, or in a specific university, that's your entire system. How you behave there depends, can differ if you are taken out from that and put in another university. So given this background on psychology, social psychology, I'm going to introduce you four theories, overview of it. Of course, we cannot go in detail. That will be a separate tutorial as well. But I'm focusing on these four theories because Literature shows these four theories has been exploited in social online social computing techniques. First is conformity theory, then confirmation bias, attenuation theory, and interference theory. Okay, among them, conformity theory has gained most of the attention, so I will take have some more, more slides on this particular theory. So let's start with theory of computing, conformity. What does it mean? This was a, it was a seminal work by Ash. And it refers to the inclination to align our attitudes and behaviors with those around us. There's a long stream of research in the 1950s in social psychology that shows existence of this behavior in social interactions. This is what they call as Ash effect, the powerful influence that a group exerts on the objective judgment of an individual. Okay, so here's a cartoon of that. You can see that um, at the top, somebody says, attack a group of soldiers. So he goes ahead, nobody follows him. 
But then Simon says a text, and then everybody follows Simon. Same situation, different individuals. Right. So why why do groups confirm? Why do we confirm to the group? So there are two kinds of conformity from social psychology. One is called information conformity. People conform to peer views in an attempt to reach appropriate behaviors and attitudes due to lack of knowledge. So the user who was saying that it is also true, I think so is true because he didn't have the knowledge about these vaccines and Omicron. So he was conforming to the peer view in attempt to reach an appropriate behavior and attitude. That's called informational conformity. Where normative conformity is, you do that to your desire to be accepted or that keep us from being isolated or rejected by others. Humans being a social element, animals, right? Nobody likes to be isolated or rejected by others. So you, 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 you show normative conformity when you are desired to be accepted in that group, in a specific group, and so on. So there was an experiment done again in, and this is also a textbook stuff, is that there are three persons, individuals, right? Their average distance between their views on something when they're alone, as you can see, are very different. But they were put in a group setting on the same views. And after three sessions, they all converge to a single view. So initially they differ, they differ, but over trials they converge. And you can see that happens in our review processes as well, right? In many often the meta reviewers or associate editors right, will ask you to converge consistent reviews. So initially three reviews may have very different views, but they converge. Right, this is an example of actually confirming. Here's some data regarding in the context of politics. So this is percentage of Republican expressing support for US missile strikes, strike against Syria in response to Bashar al-Assad's using chemical weapon again civilly. In 2013, there was only 22. In 27, it become 87%. Republicans in the group, they confirm eventually. Right? So very high percentage confirmed to this. Again, going back to this example, U3, I think it's true, may demonstrate high conformity. And on the other hand, U2 may show high non-conformity. What is the effect of that in, let's say, in the context of information diffusion? You too might block the spread of information. So many of these information diffusion models, they use basically simple models, which, diff, which is based on topology and degree of the nodes. You too may have many friends, may not have many friends. The degree doesn't matter. YouTube does not conform to it, that's all. He is not going to share that information. Right? So if you're only based, you're only trying to compute or predict the information diffusion just based on topology, you're missing out these. So from psychology theory, what conditions encourage conformity? First of all, if everyone in the groups agrees, they exert a powerful social pressure. And you can think about the groups you have been and then think about majority of the people who are agreeing. And you can imagine how much pressure you can you get for that. You can think about in the review process setting when most of the reviewers, let's say three reviewers agrees with you, agrees, and then you are the one who is standing out, it puts an implicit pressure on you. So unanimity of the majority. But if one person defects from the majority, conformity can go down drastically. So this has been shown experimentally over different cultures. Size of the group matters. Conformity pressure increases when 
the group size is three or more. And this is the typical setting in, in so online social networks. You have groups of people who are conversing or groups of follower, definitely three or more. Okay, so there is a more importance of conformity and conformity pressure in this context of larger groups. Making a public commitment. If you believe others in the group will not hear your responses, you're less likely to go along with them when you think they're incorrect. But when your social media post is public, right, you're not going to do that. So this is happens. This is very human nature, right? So what is public? And you can imagine all the social data we are talking about, most of them are public data. So public view influence behavior as well. Ambiguity like you, you three post is when people are more to self-doubt, they will yield to group conformity. They will just follow the group, what the group says. Another issue which we it is hard for us to detect automatically from online data is, but nevertheless mentioned by psychology theories is that self-esteem. People who place a low value on themselves are more likely to confirm. Okay, again, this is coming from social psychology research, but as you can see, that is not that is not a very easy thing to find out from online posts. The makeup of the majority, the makeup of the majority group, Republicans, Democrats, who are involved in the groups, more conformity occurs when a group has high status. Now, you, you may be thinking that, okay, there are individuals who think they're personally invulnerable to all these psychology theories like conformity and so on. It's, a, it's what they call as not me syndrome. Others may show conformity, but not me. Right. And people who are very successful may also have inclination to think in that way as well, because you have that confidence of success. But what psychology theory says is that they are more susceptible to influence agents because their guards are down. So they, they may not engage in mindful critical analysis of the situations. Right. Can you pressure a group to confirm? This is especially important in social influence, social network, because essentially you're talking about various groups there, communities and groups. The answer is yes. This is what we call as group thing. So members of the group attempt to confirm their opinions to what each believes to be consensus, consensus of the group. So a group may take an action each, which each member or individual member may think it's unwise. And you see that in politics often. Right. And this is this can happen for several reasons, but some of the reasons they have uh, highlighted in psychology theory books is that uh, factors that promote group thinking is like directive leadership, a dominant leader you have in a group, very cohesive group, absence of dissenting voices, lack of norms in those groups, homogeneity of members of social background. This is why we focus on diversity nowadays so much. Homogeneous members tend to confirm more. Not necessarily lead to best, best decisions. High stress from external threats. So your group is feeling... So you can imagine there are two research groups. One of them is feeling threatened because of the other research groups. Right? From external threats. So they have a low hope of a better solution than whatever the group leader says. These are 
practice that promotes group thinking. And group thinking will reflect in your social media posts. So that's all I will cover in conformity. The next theory I will summarize is confirmation bias is again something which you see very, very much in social media. You, what does it mean? It, it basically remember events that confirms our beliefs. So events that confirms my belief, I, I remember those events and ignore or forget contradictory evidence. And it is shown to be very powerful in humans. Remember, it's a bias. Bias means it's unconscious or unintentional. It's not necessarily deliberate. It does not mean that individuals are incapable of providing perspectives that counter their own beliefs, but they are not motivated to do so. Right? So it's not some, it's not an error from the human point of view. Okay. You want, is it, do you really see it in the data? Here it is. These are four news you can see, four, I would say fake news, none are true. But the percentage of respondents for, the, for a survey saying this statement is true. Biden is mentally impaired, 48% think so. See, CDC faked COVID. You see high percentage of people thinking so. Trump had stroke. So these are not true, but the people believe it. If you think that this is maybe Republicans or Democrats problem, but that's not necessarily, this is both Republican Democrat aligned. So you have these two, both all these news, and you can see the percentage of people who believe this. Okay. Here's another one of the 34 elections, presidential election debates in the United States. You survey the audience, you ask who is the debate winner, suppose debate polls, okay? So the Republicans thinks these are the Republican candidate, is the Republican candidate, the Democrats thinks is the Democrat candidates, regardless of the results. So the basically group thinking you can see, as well as bias. Okay. So now coming back to this toy example of how does it impact, let's say information diffusion. So you might think that if you consider topology, you may think that U4 may influence U1, U1 may influence U7, U6, U7 and U6 are influenced and so on, just simply based on degree-based topology, let's say, or anything based on topology. But actually, the spread of this information may go into other direction. It is possible simply because the biases people has. U4 may simply reject the objective evidence. Just ignore the news because it does not consist with his bias. So U4 may not even spread this news, share the news, and so on, whereas U3 may do it. So. We may think that information may spread from the right hand, from, from U4 to U1 and so on, but that may not even happen because of their biases. So the third one I'm going to highlight, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap, up, wrap it up by 10 so that I give enough time for my colleagues to present. So theory of attention. Theory of attention is the, what is attention is basically a mental activity or energy that distribute various tasks, right? What psychology has shown is attention is selective, divisible, you can divide your attention to multiple things, shiftable, you can shift your attention and you can sustain it, sustainable. We are interested in that selective part. So, long time ago, broadband's filter model of attention has been that the way something gets our attention is information is selected based on 
physical characteristics. And this selected information is then passed through various stages in your memory. And it lands up in your short-term memory. It has to land up in your short-term memory before you can do anything without with that, whether you want to spread the news and so on and so forth. Unselected information is blocked completely. So here's an example of a pictorial example of broadband's model is that what, what gets your attention, you can see, goes through your sensory store, filter, pattern recognition, way to the short-term memory. What you do not attend is getting blocked at the filter level. But this theory has changed. What has changed is that is Friesman's model of attenuation theory, attenuation model. The, the main idea of this model is that Unattended message is not completely blocked, is weakened for further processing and entry into your memory. And the likelihood of information getting through is determined by a threshold. So weekly process information have different threshold of recognition compared to something that is your attention, you are you have your, your, it has caught your attention. So, Friesman's model is like this. Instead of unattended being totally blocked and filtered, it is weakened. It still might reach your short-term memory. There is a sudden threshold to that, but it is definitely weakened to something which you have attended. Okay, so what is the impact of that? So here you are, let's say, the same news, you for you want to spread. Now remember, in every social media sites or every social media app you use, you are scrolling through a bunch of information, bunch of posts, bunch of things, right? So there are multiple posts trying to get your attention. And you keep flicking. Not everything you read. Right? So you can see that your attention is basically is selective. And if a particular post does not select your attention, there's no way that it will be spread by you. You simply ignore it. Regardless of degree of the network, how many people U4 is connected to? What is the algorithm used by the social media platform to populate your, your social media account? Right? What's on your wall? But it's basically what gets your attention. So, Influence of a particular thing to spread viral has to get your attention. And this can, you can think about why fake news gets attention because it's, it gets into your short-term memory, right? Compared to not so in, in, interesting news. The next one is what we call as theory of forgetting. You know, humans forget, that is their nature. But there is, psychology has studied all these and they have said there are five key theories. Decay, interference, motivated forgetting, encoding failure and retrieval failure. What we are going to focus on interference because there are some works which uses this interference theory. The decay theory is what we know. Memory degrades with time. That's everybody, right? You, you know, something in way past you cannot remember. That's very human. What interference theory says that all forgetting cannot be simply explained by decay. But in this theory, one memory competes or interferes, interferes with another. So they're competing with each other. Which one gets your attention? Which one is? And this happens in two ways. Retroactive interference where new in information you have got interface with your old ones. You can, you can, many of us have experienced this. When you learn Python or you learn C or you learn any of this language and then you move to SQL. When you learn SQL, many of the syntax does not follow from what you learned in procedural language, but you tend to use it. And then you get compiler error. Why? Retroactive interface. 
new information interferes with recall of old. And the proactive intervention is all information interface with recall of new. Sorry, the example should be the other way around, correct? Right? Uh, learning SQL, your knowledge of Python is interface. Okay. So what happens in the online social media context where, again, you have a bunch of posts. Right. They're coming at a similar time, but not necessarily at the same time. So you have old post, new post. What you see, the new post may inter interfere with your old post. You might forget about your old post. You might not even share those. Or you remember your old post. After that, the new post you ignore. Because old post was st striking to you. So which one you share is also influenced by this behavior, the psychology aspects. So I'm going to wrap up these four theories by saying that what the psychologists do in, in order to understand these theories. Basically, they follow this. Uh, the, to scientifically test the idea, they do this. They develop a hypothesis. They gather objective data, often by having surveys and talking to a group of volunteers and users, observing them analyze the results, and then publish, criticize, and replicate the results. OK. So the gathering of the objective data in psychology start with empirical investigations. OK. And they particularly designed these experiments to, to ensure to avoid false conclusion caused by expectations, biases, and prejudices. So they're careful about this because they are inherently studying human behavior, right? So if you put it in picture, there's this simple model of scientific research in psychology. You start from a research question, conduct a study, analyze the result data, and draw the conclusion to answer the question, and publish the results so that that become part of the literature. And because research literature is one of the primary source of new research questions, this forms the cycle. Literature invokes more questions. There are two basic way of researchers usually include theory in this context. The first is to raise a research question, answer that question by conducting a new study, and then offer one or more theories, usually more, to explain or interpret the results. The second way is to describe one or more existing theories, derive a hypothesis from one of those theories, test the hypothesis in a new study, and finally reevaluate the theory. So in our context, in the design of social computing solutions, we are more interested in the second approach. We are looking to establish theories of psychology and how that can influence our design or inform our design. We're not trying to create new theories. It is possible. It is indeed possible because massive volumes of online data may create new theories which that has not been explained by traditional psychology theories. But we haven't seen work in that aspect yet from our community. So in picture, this is what's going on in social network. People are connected, they are talking, they're conversing, and so on. And this is what we have, a massive volume of data. We look into this data, and we try to detect behaviors with respect to social psychology, model those quantitatively, and then used to analyze the data and predict. That's what we have. We cannot possibly take interviews or observe a bunch of volunteers to understand their group, their behavior from psychological perspective, because the scale is huge in a social network. You can't do that. It's not a practical solution. Right. So all we have is massive data. But data reflects human behavior, human biases, everything. 
can we build models to solve social computing problems? So the next part of the tutorial will be taken by Ening. She's my second year PhD student. This is our first talk in a conference. Okay, so she's a little bit nervous. Okay. And she will talk about the diffusion model. So, uh, hi, I'm taking the second part about introduce uh, how the psychology theory they will be used to inform the design of the diffusion models. And um, yeah, so before the formal introduction of the diffusion models, let's quickly understand what the online information diffusion is. It's a process by which the information spread over a network. And here I highlight three keywords, the information, the spread, and network. And network here is, of course, the online social network and where the users are nodes and their interactions are edges. And the researchers, they try to understand this uh, complex information diffusion by asking a series of questions about these three basic elements. And here are the several questions, I list them out, like the which of the information diffuse the most, how and why the information diffusing and will be diffused in the future, and which network members play different roles. And especially for the second question, how then why information diffuse, and it's about the spread me mechanism. And to understand this mechanism, that is uh, why the diffusion models developed. And the good performances of these models will have um, several applications like the viral marketing, rumor detection, fake news propagation, user behavior prediction, and so on. But how to develop such diffusion models? First, um, for the diffusion process, the very complex phenomenon and people have to find a way to model it. So they abstract and formalize the complex um, process from two aspects. First is a structure and the second is temporal dynamics. And um, for example here, um, like the structure here is like the graph denotes who interacts with whom and the um, people will influence each other by uh, like their uh, interactions where there are number of uh, followers kind of thing. And the temporal niche uh, dynamics here uh, will shows uh, how the information spread over time. So as you can see here, uh, there is a timeline shows when the user for posted information and when the users they interact with each other. Yeah, and the diffusion models are usually developed to explain or infer the structure and temporal dynamics of the diffusion model in a given network uh, in the diffusion. Yeah, and the, they also predict how the information will diffuse in the future. And this model, they can be graph based or non graph based. And for the non graph based, then people will use it. Uh, epidemiology uh, models like the SIR or SIER kind of models to model it, but not use very topological things. And as we all know that the spread of the information is a result of the human behaviors, human thinking, human interactions, but the existing models, they are not aware of such psychological elements. Yeah, so we can just uh, conclude that the existing models they're not sufficient to capture the information uh, diffusion or do not have the sufficient understanding of it. So also we can expect that after we incorporate psychological theories, uh, the performance of the existing diffusion models could be better. So we should find some way to incorporate the psychological theories into the current models. And there have several studies have already um, just take the several initial steps to do that. And among the several um, psychological theories, four has been incorporated into the design of the diffusion models. And these four theories have been introduced before. So now I'm just gonna just jump into the overview of how to model these theories. So for the conformity, and we already know that there are two types of conformity. So I'll focus on the existing classical diffusion model, and they have a parameter called the interpersonal influence strength to show how a person will be influenced by others. 
So in the model, they decompose this influence strength into two additive parts and quantify each part of the conformity within this part. And for the second and the third theories, attention attenuation theory and inference theory, they first also focus on the existing diffusion model, and they find there is a part of the model that contrary to the psychological mechanisms. So they change this part, the statistic activation threshold, into a one that is more consistent with the psychological series. So they, they replace the threshold with a personalized nonlinear growth function. And then for the fourth theory, the confirmation bias, we all know that a person has a tend tendency to search or explore the information that confirms their original thoughts. So they characterize this behavior of the human thinking as a state dependent function. So which means that um, the influence weight of the news agencies over the individuals, they are not static as the person has a tendency to adopt their own opinions, but not will not adopt totally adopt the opinions from the news agencies. So next, I will introduce the details how to model these models one by one based on the existing studies. So just a review of the theories over the information diffusion. So people, they will conform to others' opinions because they may lack of the basic knowledge and they may also just to avoid being isolated. But to model such human thinking or behaviors is very difficult. So here are three challenges. Is uh, at least three challenges that the modeling will face. Uh, first is the private belief of individuals may not be exposed explicitly in the social activities. And second is that the conformity of the individual is contact sensitive. So we may conform to one person's opinion at certain conversation, but when we switch to another topic, I may have different opinion. I may not confirm to uh, the like the influencers. So it's context sensitive. And the third one is the knowledge of the topology of the social network is not sufficient to understand or to model the conformity. So when we use more information from the large volume data instead of only focus on topology. So here is the structure of the uh, this paper conduct. So to better characterize the online information diffusion, first focus on the classical diffusion model, the Hox processes. And we want to extend that to the conformity aware version. So this study is the developed the conformity aware information diffusion model, and we can call it in short chassis. And this extension needs the um, quantification of the information and the normative conformity. There's two types of conformity. So they use the diffusion tree interference techniques to quantify it, but the details is just like uh, like intuitively focus on the psychological theories, and you may uh, notice this definition. But how to characterize this definition? You may use to, uh, the attributes within the data and to develop uh, a certain like the formula or the equations to capture the informational conformity. And then we will also use like the opinion mining kind of techniques to dig out their opinions and also use the user activities like the parents or child activity and to use as the tree. But uh, this kind of modeling not only use the topology things, but also the uh, many other data. And after we have such conformity aware version of diffusion models. And this model has so many unknown parameters and we want to uh, just estimate this at a parameter so that we can understand the diffusion or we can predict the future diffusion of the information. So in this paper, they use the semi-parametric interference approach to learn the from the observed data so they can estimate the parameter and use uh, the model with the parameters to do the future prediction or to compare with other diffusion models to see which model perform better. Yeah, and here is a part of the results. And uh, this paper, they use two set of data set. One is from Facebook, another one is from the Twitter. So here, as you can see in the X label, the SF means the subset of Facebook data and ST is a subset of Twitter data. And they order the data chronologically and take the proportion of it to test how much data we would like to use and to generate what kind of performance. 
And the model they compare with the existing models like the ADM4, MMEL kind of thing, and they developed the several variants of the transit model to compare with each other. And here the look like is the evaluation matrix. So if the value is higher, and it means the model performs better. So the first conclusion of this study that shows is that the more training data leads to the better accuracy. So you can see here is a positive trend in the figure. And the second is the performance compared with other existing models. And you can see the chances and its various models, they better capture the information diffusion better because they have higher log-like values. So um, from this study, so the, the intro incorporation of the conformity theory will uh, help the diffusion model to better capture the diffusion. So that's the first study about the incorporation of conformity theory. And then for the second one, for the incorporation of the attention attenuation and interference, interference theories. So um, for the first figure on the left, you have already familiar with, I think, uh, it's like to model how the human, they interact with each other. We can model it as a graph, but only focus on this graph, we may just not very understand how the information spread from one user to another. So there is another way to model the information spreading and use a cascade. So it shows how an original post or a tweet sent by the user for spread to another user. So now the focus is how the information spread. So when uh, the user who received the information from the last person and spread it to another one will marked green here and the other users are marked as gray. Uh, yeah, so uh, for this paper we're gonna introduce, they propose that the people will forward and disseminate their online information based on their interest and attention. And this kind of behaviors or the human thinking, they have several, like the two here, the psychological theories to back up. So according to the theory, the attention people give to the obtained information will decrease and shift over time. And also the new information will increase the people's resistance to the previous information and the spread of information maybe will be hindered. And so um, the, this kind of human behavior also have the empirical evidence to back up. So according to the empirical findings, the spread of the information will become more difficult as the cascade depth increases. And here is a cascade depth, so you can understand, understand it like the maximum number of the retweet hops within the cascade. So uh, it means when the information spread and spread over time, uh, there were few uh, users who will notice the information and the spread of the information will be hindered. So uh, they, they study, they check the existing diffusion model, the LT model to see whether this model they are uh, it is consistent with the psychological theory and empirical finding and the LT model is said like each node has an activation threshold indicating how easily it will be affected. So the each node here is a user. It has two act uh, states. One is inactive, one another one is active. So if the sum of the influence received from the other users, they exceed the threshold, they will become active and they will receive the information and spread it out but otherwise they were not spread and would be like state in the inactive state. And here the threshold is constant for the classical model, but it's just not consistent with the psychological theories and empirical evidence. So we replace this threshold uh, as a one that is consistent with the psychological theories. So according to the theory and empirical finding, this is that the activation threshold of nodes will grow non-linearly over time and eventually converge to one. And of course, when the um, threshold, threshold that they reach the one, it means that the people are totally resistant to the information and they will not spread it out. And also this growth function is personalized. So different people, they have different uh, like the resistance to the in information and the uh, function, the threshold will change with over time dynamically. Okay, so here is the summary of the contribution of this paper. So they first extend the classical model to the resistant linear threshold model. So uh, this extension just based on the psychological theory and the finding we mentioned before, as it has this model on the three types of 
networks. So these three types of network, you can generate it, use some packages in Python, like there are some ER model, uh, they're just use some um, different parameters to generate. And they quantify and compare the dissemination characteristics of the simulation results from the RLT model and compare them with the empirical results. So just like they generate the set of simulation results using the RLT model and they compare with the existing results and such kind of comparison needs is a, uh, like the metric. So the metric is related by the dissemination characteristics. Yeah, and, and they also conduct several sensitivity analysis and case study, and especially they perform the two case studies to demonstrate effectiveness of this model. And now I'm gonna introduce the uh, like the case study they conducted. And here they use the data set about the human's opinions about the COVID-19, about the uh, travel ban of Wuhan, the first city that uh, has a, a COVID-19 the virus spread. Yeah, and the data set is from Baidu index. So here's the red line is the uh, spread of the information from the real data. And they conduct 500 numbers of simulations. So the blue line is a model and the blue shade is uh, 59, yeah, 95, yeah, 95 uh, percent the confidence uh, interval. And as you can see, is if a uh, simulation result, they can capture the period time, the start time, and the recession period of the information spread. And here's the propagation proportion is a kind of spread intensity, how many um, information spread over time. And if you accumulate this propagation pro proportion over time, you can see there is a figure on the right. So these two lines are so consistent with each other, although there are some difference. Uh, so yeah, so that is a second, um, that just like the try to incorporate the existing series into the design of the future models. And for the last theory, the confirmation bias. So first I'm gonna introduce a new theory, uh, an, a new concept actually, the opinion dynamics. Uh, I'm not putting the definition here because it's too similar to the information diffusion. So the opinion dynamics is a kind of process by which the uh, individual's opinion spreads over time. But the difference between the opinion dynamics and the information diffusion is that uh, for the opinion dynamics that are more focused on the human behavior, you know, in human opinions, how the individual, they form opinions based on the information they received and how such opinions spread over the network. And in this paper, uh, they propose that the individual, they will form the opinions based on three factors. So this, there's a new opinion dynamic. So they said they were, uh, opinions were based on three factors like the innate opinions, their original thinking, the information they received from the other individuals and the information they received from the news sources or the photo source leaders. And typically the opinion dynamics are studied in the social networks. So it's informationally symmetric and static. So as you can see in this social network, the people will exchange the information and uh, whether they adopt the opinion from others will depend on like the social influence of the people and or uh, and the link here can be the influence strength. And uh, this connectivity between each pair of users, they are modeled as static. But you may notice that it's kind of weird because if we only study the opinion dynamics they proposed on such networks, they can add most to capture the first two sources of influence, the innate opinions and information from the other individuals. But for the third one, the information from the new sources, uh, study on such social network cannot capture, especially for a third one that is where the confirmation bias will play a role because people have the tendency to stick on their own opinions instead of totally take the opinions from the new sources. So for this study, they extend the, the existing social network to the cyber social network. Yeah, so they add up another, another layer, the uh, cyber layer, which denotes the new sources or the soft leaders. And the links between the new sources and the users in the social networks are asymmetric, which means usually the new, new sources they will only spread their opinions to the public, but they will not change their opinions 
based on the public opinion. Yeah, so it's as a metric. And also the connectivity between the new sources and the users, they are dynamic, they are, uh, they are impacted by the human confirmation bias. So that's a, uh, like the cyber social networks feature. And to study the proposed dynamics on such network, and they propose that if we spread the different opinions over such network using the proposed dynamics, the all agents they will they they will not to convert to the constants to the uh, like like the previous study they shows out. Instead, if we spread different information, they will achieve the steady state, the equilibrium state. And also, the individuals here they will update their information based on the three sources we mentioned before, and also for the weight of influence of the different, like the users or the new sources. Uh, the users in the social network, the influence they will be fixed based on the trust. So it's just a, like assumption they, they assume it to be fixed, um, but you you can also change that according to like other the psychological theories kind of thing. And they also uh, suggest that the uh, weight of the influence that new sources on the users is dynamic because the existence of the confirmation bias. So uh, just now the proposed dynamics and the social networks are the first contribution of this paper. And then they compute the equilibrium point of the proposed dynamics. So here the equilibrium point in mathematics is defined as the constant solution of the ODEs, the original differential equations. Um, but in current context, you can understand that like the final opinion the user adopts uh, after a period of time of opinion evolution. And such final opinion is dependent of the, their original opinion. So it means that no matter what kind of opinion you adopt at first, uh, after a period of time of uh, information spreading and opinion spreading, and you will finally uh, to adopt another opinion that may be a little different from the original opinion. So they developed the, the equations, a set of equations to calculate such equilibrium point. And such the calculation is under the linear and the nonlinear state dependent weight functions. So the state dependent weight function here is where the confirmation bias were introduced. And then they analyze the impact of the news agencies using proposed dynamics, and they, they conduct two set of experiments. First, they test the effects of the distribution of news agencies' opinions, and second is the distance between the polarized opinions of news agencies. So the first study, they only introduced one news agency to test its effects on the opinion dynamics, and for a second one, they introduced two news agencies to test the polarized opinions spreading. And they test these two experiments on the credit cards advice network. It's a very popular data set that used in the existing like the volume of um, opinion dynamics. Okay, so now we come to the analyze part. The first experiments about the distribution of news agencies' opinion. So here the network structure is more consistent to the cyber social network they proposed, and they only focused on the one news agency and uh, which is the yellow note here. And uh, the news agency will only impact the users here, but uh, the users will, um, the opinions will not affect the opinions adopted by the news agencies. And for simplicity, this study, they only test the influence of the news agency on the opinion dynamics by influence only one node. So here, it, it denotes that they use the M1 only influence the user 14. And to see like, in the current network structure, because the different nodes have different L degree, have different interactions with other nodes. So depend on network structure, influence different users will have different impact on the opinion dynamics. But the, uh, like the selection of the user is uh, important also for the opinion dynamics. So here is the individual index IO is a news agency, new eyes influence of the, on the individual eyes solely. And they test the two distribution of news agencies' opinions. Uh, the UI is a single model, and the U2 is bi model. So it means uh, it will take the like the uh, random opinion, but the, these opinions are at the most extreme side. So they all follow the normal distributions. And the first conclusion is that uh, when we try out to influence different nodes on the network. The user with a higher degree will 
uh, bring the larger impact on the network. So as you can see here, the sample deviation is a kind of metric to evaluate the impact the, the news agency bring on the opinion dynamics. And the calculation of this sample deviation, and maybe let me back to the previous slides. So they calculate the equilibrium point of each user uh, before the impact of the news agency and after. So for each user, you have two equilibrium points and you calculate their difference. So you can conduct such calculation for each user and calculate the average of their differences. So um, that's the sample deviation. So it means that uh, when we uh, influence the one user and it will impact other users of the uh, period of time of opinion evolution and it will just change the existing uh, the curve, the existing users' opinions. And this, okay, so the, uh, of course, that the order of the influence on the users will not change um, among the two different uh, distribution here. So, uh, and second, the result is that the, U, the distribution U2 result in the bigger sample division than U1. So which means that for, for the U2 distribution is bimodal distribution, which means the um, news agency, they will spread the, the more extreme opinions. And so spread of the extreme opinions will have higher impact on the opinion dynamics. And also uh, to summarize the experiments conducted by the study, so we have the empirical, the, the practical implications. So uh, when we want to change our public opinion, which user we would like to choose? We want to, we would like to choose the influencers, the one with most our degree. Uh, so when we change the opinions of this user, it will have a larger impact on the opinion dynamics. And of course, if we just spread the more extreme opinions, it will have a larger impact on the opinion dynamics. And next, uh, for the second experiments, uh, they have the distance between two polarized opinions adopted by two new agencies and how uh, the distance between these opinions will have impact on the opinion dynamics. So here are two news agencies, as you can see in the network, they are denoted by the green and the red nodes. And all the rest of the users, they all have the access to the news agencies. And it has a difference that the distance between the two polarized opinions and the difference uh, range from the zero, zero here to the 0 0.95. So the opinions just like range from the unified one to the polarized one. And they also uh, evaluate the impact such polarized opinions on the, uh, on the opinion dynamics on the networks. And I'm gonna, I will not just introduce how they calculate the, like the matrix here, but uh, if you're interested in it, uh, I will explain more to you after my sharing. And, but you can see the result here shows that the longer distance between the means of polar opinions will result in a larger sample variance, which means that if the two news agencies, they have the very different opinions and they spread opinions over the network, they will have the larger impact of the opinion dynamics. Uh, so in this study, so they, ju they just uh, to confirm that the existence confirmation bias, so they will have a different uh, impact on the existing uh, opinion dynamics. And based on the proposed opinion dynamics and the cyber social network, uh, the, there are another two studies subsequently, they adopt the existing models to study the spread of a competitive information. And the spread of competitive information uh, are you really like to study like the misinformation spread and political polarization? And for these two studies, they are all aware that the confirmation bias will help create the echo chambers within the networks. But this kind of awareness is not ignored by the prior work. And of course, uh, here are two studies we want to introduce. Uh, one is the extension version of another one. So I'm going to just put their core methodology and, and results together to share. So the, these two studies, they both adopt the opinion dynamics and the linear confirmation bias model. And here, the linear confirmation bias model, you may just be, um, yeah, also where do I hear, hear about it from the last paper? So, so for, for the last paper, I mentioned they calculate the equilibrium point under the linear or the nonlinear state dependent function. So this 
So the linear state function, the state dependent weight function here is just the linear confirmation bias model because that is where we introduce the confirmation bias parameter. And this analyze the information spread uh, with, with two information sources, that's the competitive information sources, and they formulate the problem as a zero-sum game, and this game admits a unique Nash equilibrium, which is in your strategies. And here is some like the terms, the zero-sum game, Nash equilibrium, and pure strategies. I'm gonna introduce what are they later. Okay, and they also study the impact of confirmation bias on the Nash equilibrium. So just to test or exam how the confirmation bias, they will influence the opinion dynamics uh, by showing like uh, the re result of the, of the, the Nash equilibrium. Okay, so here, uh, although I don't want to do that, but I have to introduce the equations of opinion dynamic model. So here it means the XI is opinion of user uh, VI, and it shows the how the opinion, the user's opinion at time step K plus one will be influenced by the three sources we mentioned before. One is innate opinion, second is influence from other individuals, and the third one is information from another two information sources. And uh, I'm gonna first introduce the first two, but uh, I will not introduce the, the meaning of the every parameter because they were too, like, too long. And to understand the overall idea, I'm um, first introduced like XI, as I mentioned before, it is the individual's BI's opinion at time K or time K plus one. And the SI here is the individual's innate opinion. And the extreme innate opinions is taking the maximum and minimum value of opinions among all the existing users. And for the influence from the other users, it's calculated by sum of all the influence they received from their neighbors, the other users, VJ. So the uh, omega IJ or WIJ here is the influence of the individual VJ on VI. And for the third part here, because these two studies are studying the spread of the two competitive information. So here uh, they have two parts. One is for one information source and another one is for another information source. So the H and G here I highlight in red, their opinions of the competitive information sources. And their aim, this the aim of these sources is to move the public opinions to the two streams they present. So yeah, so because there is two streams, they're they are just at the both ends of the current um, public opinions. So as you can see the relationship here. Okay, and the influence these information sources on the users are uh, calculated by the state dependent weight function. Here is the uh, omega i over bar and on the bar. And these two functions, they are the linear confirmation bias model. And the beta and the gamma here are the bias parameters. And the, the beta here is a constant value, and the gamma here is the most important parameter for the modeling. And if you set the gamma here uh, equal to zero, it, it means that the information source has a certain impact on the um, user's opinion at next step. But if we if we set the gamma as not equals to zero, it means that the existence of the confirmation bias will reduce the influence that the information source on the uh, opinions of the user. Uh, so what is the zero sum gain? Uh, so the, there is some game like here in the network, there are two information sources, uh, Alice and Bob, and they have the competitive opinions. And uh, the, the cost of spread of the information will calculated by the cost function FGH here. And the Alice wins is a loose, is a, is a loose of the Bob's. So their objectives are opposite. So for Alice, uh, suppose its objective is to maximize the cost function and the bot is to minimize. So that's the general meaning of what the zero sum game. Okay, and then for the Nash equilibrium, it's a state that gives Alice and Bob no incentive to deviate from that initial strategy. The strategy is the opinion they adopt at first. And there's a scenario that if we can have two opinions, the G star and H star, and they can uh, like to calculate a cost function like to achieve the maximum 
a value for Alice and the minimum uh, value for Bob, and we can say that they they achieve the Nash equilibrium. So in other words, uh, if either of uh, Alice or Bob, they change their opinion, they change different value of G or H, uh, they will not achieve the best value for their uh, cost function. So to understand the Nash equilibrium, you can also like take the McDonald and KFC as two examples. So each of them, if they both uh, take the um, low value to spread their products, neither of both will change their strategy because if you change your product uh, to the higher prices, of course, they will, you may just uh, gain more money, but you will lose the uh, customers. So that is what the Nash equilibrium means. So next, the experiments is to show how the confirmation bias will influence the spread of information by showing the, um, the result of the Nash equilibrium. So a uh, first scenario is to set the gamma equals to zero, which means uh, what if there is no confirmation bias exists? What's the spread of the competitive, competitive formation? And here is the initial setting of the public's opinions. The set two of the existing users as 0 0.2, and the rest of them are the 0 0.75. And this set of beta, uh, the beta and gamma here is the parameters of the linear confirmation bias model, and the beta is 0 0.06. And here is the result of the Nash equilibrium. So, which means the, spread, the best strategy that adopted by the Alice and Bob is to set uh, one's opinion to zero and another one to one. And you can see in this figure, the cost function for the Alice is, uh, is a maximum and for Bob is minimum. So, they all achieve their uh, optimization objectives. Yeah, and next we move on to the scenario without the confirmation bias. So that, which means we set the gamma uh, not equal to zero. And the, the initial setting of the public opinions is also the same as the last scenario. But they set the gamma equals to 0 0.06, which equals to the beta. So you can change the number of the value here, but they, they choose to test the, the this value 0 0.06. And based on the calculations, they can obtain that the existing op uh, public opinions, the, the minimum value is 0 0.2, the maximum is 0 0.75, and the average of the current public's innate opinions is 0 0.7256. Okay, so here is the calculation result of the Nash equilibrium. So as you can see, the best strategy now adopted by the Alice and Bob should be the Alice is 0 0.2 and the Bob is 1. So I highlight 0 0.2 because that's the part that different from the last scenario without the confirmation bias. And yeah, as you can see here, the result of the Nash equilibrium, the, the figure, and the confirmation bias, they move the Nash equilibrium towards the center. But it only works with one of the information sources. Here, they work for the Alice, but if you take the different parameter values, they will have the impact on um, the box. And also, such moves will only happen when the innate opinions of the public are not neutral. So here, the average um, opinions are not neutral here. So um, to sum up, here is, uh, I introduce uh, how the confirmation bias, they will influence the opinion dynamics by showing the Nash equilibrium and for the last four theories in cooperation to the existing diffusion models, the, the existence of the psychological theories, they will all bring the impact on the opinion dynamics. And yeah, so hope you have a general understanding how the diffusion models can be redesigned by incorporating the psychological theories and how the psychological theories they will make difference. So that's my part, as it's near the coffee break. We we are open to any questions now. If you have any questions, please do drop. Or we can do it after that. During the coffee break. I remember in the uh, graph you show us there was the teaching of the models to the uh, real data. Can you go back to of course. Is it the second one or the first one? I think that's the first one. Okay. 
let me back to the first one. Um, oh, this one. Yeah, that's okay. okay. So it's, it looks quite well if you take a look on the uh, our spec that uh, with the uh, some distinct distinctive uh, differences uh, regarding the replacement period. Yes, the model scales and scales down steadily, and uh, in reality, it stays on the quite low level, but it's still present in the network and it might be I think that it, it, in the numbers this might not be really big but uh, uh, if you take a look from the quality perspective it feels like a, it's a huge difference yeah uh, uh, that that would say the network uh, on the 0 0.2 level might be very important for uh, re reissuing or uh, re a feeling of this information in the future, and also for uh, like creating the classes of people who are very strongly convinced uh, regarding this information and may answer for a new outbreak of this kind of information very strongly. So, so although it looks like it fits uh, from my perspective that uh, it's quite different uh, at the revision period, it's still right at the end. Yeah, thanks for pointing out, and I agree with you. So uh, it's not like the 100% uh, fit, and especially for the recession period, it has a, like a, a larger difference between the modeling result and, ex and existing results. So I think that's well, one part of the this current work can improve because the spread of information may not just stop here. Maybe there were just like more people to post their information kind of thing, but they when they only focus on this period, maybe the model cannot like to capture all of the features. And maybe we can just like to in, in, include another parameter or include more data to study a larger time span and maybe the result will be different. Yeah, but the main thing I want to mention that is uh, by incorporating the theory, then they can just largely to model the real situation. Thank you. I think it could be also because, you know, basically each paper is modeling a single thing. But that's a real data. And it could be multiple theories as well. Which, which is why, you know, it's possible that certain part cannot be explained by simply using one theory. Yeah, that's obvious that the model is way of simplifying the value. Yeah. Use it as. Yeah, so that's the skill the model needs to answer, or at least to answer the, the, the most important quality uh, in that time. Okay, so we will see you again. Uh, we will take again questions later uh, after the coffee break, and you can talk to us during the coffee break. Okay, uh, shall we begin? We carry on to the next part. Uh, just now, Yining has introduced us about how the give 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 us a piece of information how it will spread across the social network. So let's imagine a uh, a similar story. So it's like recall that Yining told has introduced the, the, this information diffusion model as a spread mechanism, right? So giving you a spread of mechanism. No matter it's a piece of information or maybe uh, some water. So let's imagine a, a, a different story. I give you a drip of water, you drop it onto uh, some kind of surface of a new material, and you already know how the water will spread over the material. So we can now arrive to a new question. The water drop off, drop off to the material and the material some area of the material get wet, right? So we can write, write to a new question. What's the size of the of this area for the wet? So now we, we carry on. Uh, given that question, we can carry on to the next part. For the next part, suppose now we change the water to a piece of information. And change the su surface of material will be to a social network, and change to change the water spread model to the information different model. 
Then we write a new question, give your uh, social network a piece of information, and you already know the information to build a model. Then what is the size of the expect influence for the spread, for this information spread? So this information may, may spread from one node to another within the spread, within the social network. We call it as a word of mouth effect. That means the information propagation iterates from one friend to another friend through the friend of friend relationship and cause a large cascade in the end. The given that given that phenomenon, we ask to we, we carry on to a nice question how we can model the the spread of the influence for, for the piece of information. How large is the area area for this wide part? Then for the social network is how large is the is a node, a node set, which are influenced by this word of mouth effect. So this effect can be formally modeled as a such kind of a, uh, a mathematical function, giving you a, we, we have some, some, some nodes initially get the piece of information, which we denote as C set S. And uh, we are curious about how large the, information will spread over the network. And the size of the, the white part is denoted as sigma, sigma S, which is, which is the expected number of user influenced by S. So let's let, let's see the, the following figure. Uh, we have a simple network and we get a, on one node initially gets this piece of information uh, that is V1. From V1, suppose V1 will Introduce this information to spread the information to from to to his friends and for friends of friends. Suppose the inf information spreads following some kind of probability. Let's see the probability equal to one. Then the from v one the information will spread over to v three, v four, v six, and v seven. Right. So at the end, the number of nodes influenced by this piece of information can be fine, right? So we also know, notice there exists another phenomenon that, that we, we call as the marginal influence. See, we have already got V1 as the initial node who has who spread the information. Then we also can ask further, if we have V1, then if, uh, if, we, if, we, if we add V2 into the C set S, then what's the, Marginal increase for the influence. For V2, we can see we, if we add A2, V2 into, uh, into S and it will spread the information also similarly. Uh, at the end, uh, at the end, due to, e, due to the addition of V2, we get, we get four new nodes influenced. So the mar we, we define the, this kind of influence as a marginal influence with, with res respect to V1. So the Marginal influence of V2 with respect to V1 is four. So here we, hereby we have introduced how we can model the influence function using a formula, for, using a mathematical formula from the influence function. Then we carry on to the next step. Recall we focus on social psychology from the influence function, right? So what is the social psychology? How social psychology can, can act within this influence fun function? Let's imagine uh, such kind of a, a popular information spread in a simple net network with five, five seats, five, five nodes. Uh, five nodes, there are two topic of two pieces of information. Suppose we, we, we focus on the extract of the piece of human feature re related to iPad. We can arrive to the, the right side, the, the simple information spread within three, no three nodes. In this, in, in within three nodes, we can observe it for, for each node, they, they, they simultaneously act as two actors. One is for, for example, V1 and V3, both inf are influencing others, right? So we can try to quantify how well it will influence the others. So this kind of, this, this kind of actor we name it as an influencer. That means the individual who is influencing others. If we quantify the, we, we try to use some 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 score function to quantify the degree of its influence. 
we can we can denote that as the phi u to 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 imagine phi u can can quantify the influence quality quality of for for you use the u for know the u. And similarly, on the other part, both v three and v four are both are influenced by the others. So we can also find that the the, the actor as a influence name is as an influence. Uh, influ that means individual individuals who is influenced by the others. This recall we we have already know this kind of phenomenon can be attributed to to a separate theory that means that thing is called conformity. The so we can try to use another function to quantify the conformity of this this nodes. Suppose we use omega u to denote the conformity for the user. So hereby we have two for for each node we have two we 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 have two values of score functions, one for influence, one for influence, or one for influencer, or one for conformity. So then we can we the, the next the next question is so how we can model the score function for both influencing and the, and the conformity. So we we trace back to some intuitions from psychology textbook. And uh, early example, early exam experiments in social psychology, social computing studies, we have ob observed several intuitions. For example, also this intuition has been justified in some earlier sl slides in this tutorial. For let's see the two different examples showed in the figure. The left side, we say we, we can find several several marks along the edges. Positive or negative. Positive here means uh, user agrees with the not is uh, with opinion of his peers. The negative means it, it disagrees with the, the his peers. So for user U one, you see, you can see U one agrees. There are four edges that directed from U one, and all the positive. That means U one always agrees with his peers. So we can. Suppose that U1 is easily influenced, that it shows mostly conformed to other others' opinions. For the rest part, for, for the rest part, uh, let's me uh, let's examine U2. U2 are, are among there, there are four different edges pointing out, and uh, three of them are negative ones. That means U2 mostly shows opposite opinions. Hence, U two may may have show now uh, very low conformity level. Recall that we have a slides show the spread of fake information earlier. We also have a U two who blocks the information spread. Right, his his, his hard to, to be conformed. Right, so we we tr hereby we try to find some score function to quantify how well how how easily it is conformed. So if we have the phi u and the phi omega v, we can we can address some or uh, some some further step of some further problem problems. So the score function for both omega and omega and the phi is a fundamental for for some downstream task. And the existing works with in social computing always focus on the influence influence but not conformity. So how to quantify the different person of different persons from, com from, from the aspect of conformity is an open question. So given that, uh, given that if we have the answer of a conforming quantification, we can answer a series of downstream tasks. First, we, we, we will, I'll introduce two representative downstream tasks in the follows. One is the uh, social influence estimation, right? Which Focus on answering the question: How we can model the influence function or the influence spread result? And given the influence function, if we already solve influence function, we can carry on with another question. That is uh, another area of research that means uh, that, that names as influence maximization. Uh, the re relationship between between them can also be traced back the. The example I just introduced using Vorten and the surface. So, so suppose we can for the influence estimation is to estimate the how large is the area of white area if we drop a, a drip of water over the surface, right? 
we can if we, we already know can evaluate to the the wide area we can carry on to another question if we, if the surface is not flat then you drop drop the water on different parts we can cause can, can lead to different area right so what is how you can choose the the part you drop the water such that the area is the maximum is the large largest so that that's attributed to the next question so in both question will i will introduce the two representative tasks uh, strategy um, because due, due to the time limit we we also to to based on the introduction of the two representative strategy we can also uh we all, I also introduce uh, how other psychology theories such kind of conformation bias and also uh interference theories can be uh, can lead to different m strategies uh, simply both of uh, for first part, influence uh, influence function estimate, estimation, I'll uh, introduce two different representative representative tasks. First is the named as casino. Casino, recall that in the social network work we can find we we we, we can model the each node using both uh, a pair of function, which is the influence function and another conformity function, right? And for both influence and conformity, the intuition can be found from the edge or the mark, a label of the edge. So we can label each edge first using positive or negative signs to see whether a user agrees or disagrees with his peers. But given that, given such a kind of agree, agreement, if there exists such kind of agreement from user U to V, we can see it is a sign of trust between U to V. And otherwise, it's a, it is a sign of distrust or disagreement with V. So to, to evaluate, to mark the, 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 the edge is, is not an open question. We can use uh, some sentiment analysis tools to, to, mark, to label the edge. So also in some, so, so, so most of the social networks they also they already pro provide the sign of the edge. For example, in the opinion, you can, you you can mark it as like or dislike. Similarly, you in Facebook or YouTube, you can like or dislike it. So this already no or, or, or provided. Given all the signs, okay. Given all the signs, we can trace back to to the basic intuition. In our earlier slides, we recall that the earlier slides we we showed a user if a user mostly conforming to others, it will it is a sign of high conformity. Otherwise, if in the in the other end, if a user always influences others, so it will show high influence for the user. So these are both basic intuition for for our study. A piece. But notice that in, in this intuition, we only focus on the positive edges, right? Whereas the adjective, negative ones, if we take into account the negative edges, we can also find some two different intuitions. Suppose we have a, a negative edges, edges, if a user always, if a user always show opposite, opposite opinions with his peers, it will lead to low conformity, right? Uh, and for similarly, if a user always be is always disagreed with, with its followers, it will you show deep low influence, right? So for putting all these four intuition together, we can we can arrive to such kind of uh, computation model. In this computation model, uh, it's a, it's a pairwise iterative computation formula. I say. Both formula ref reflects the all the four, all the, all, all the four intuitions we listed above, and this pairwise computation is valid. We call this pairwise comp iterative compilation valid if it is guaranteed to converge. In fact, we can prove it that the, 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 it, it is assured to converge. So, following that, we can compute the a pair of scores for each node showing its influence and the conformity score. 
uh, putting all that together, we show the all the, the, the whole process procedure for the computation for both gauss as a for you need this slides. Uh, given your so uh, a large network, a, a network may be may make a different topic. Uh, on the left le left hand side, a one a two a three means different topic. Uh, for different topic, we can extract topic aware subgraph. For each topic, we have a subgraph. And for each topic, we can label the edges uh, as positive or negative. And uh, using following the net positive or negative, it can calculate the both function iteratively from based on the previous slide. So given all the functions, we we can quantify the a pair of values for each node within the social network. But how to evaluate whether the result is correct or not, or whether the the the, the, the quantify quantification is good. So we put it to, into a, a popular downstream task, is it, which is edge prediction. Edge prediction. That means we gave you uh, a, a a piece of a social network and uh, give you uh, the can cal calculate the pair of fun function or values for each node, and uh, to predict using some. Uh, learned models to to you to based on the pair of functions function values, and try to try to see whether the predict the edge is the the prediction result is accurate or not. So, uh, putting all the, it all together here shows the ablation study uh, by putting only consider only uh, influence or uh, both influence and conformity or both con considering both positive and negative edges. We can find the, the performance of different strategies the, by putting all the four factors together. We arrive to a to, to the best performance. And besides, we also imagine another interesting question. That is, uh, what's the distribution for the nodes? If we put the no, nodes uh, put, put the both fun, both quantification results into a into some coordinate. What's the distribution for the nodes? So here, for the, we we brought for three different heat, heat map, uh, in the aspect of performance and influence space, we observed some interesting phenomena for both the the, the green green circle part. The nodes here show some aspect they they exhibit high influence but a very low conformity. So the first observation is that the most influential nodes hardly conform to others in in this in this this set. Similarly, for the red circle part, we also find another observation: the most conforming nodes also influence others. In all the data, data set we had we have examined. Okay, that's uh, the first part. First work in influence estimation. Secondly, we also introduce another. Work named as confluence. Confluence, uh, confluence studied the uh, conformity in some uh, in a, a fine grained model. As they, they, they dis distinguish the conformity into three different subtypes. One is individual conformity, that is to evaluate how easily a user V behavior conforms to her friends. The second is the peer conformity that is used to, to model how likely a user V's opinion is influenced by some particular friends, V prime. The third is group conformity, which is used to model the conformity of user V's behavior to groups it belongs to. So for uh, I will introduce each, each kind of part in detail. So recall that in, for individual conformity, we need to uh, we aim to model how easily user based behavior conforms to her friends. For in confluence, they propose a, a a quantification model for this individual conformity using the following factor. The first part AVT means user VI performed action A at time T, and then the, the rest part t meant t prime it means user v has some friend v prime who has performed the same action 
in an earlier time step. And the difference between T and prime in and T prime is within a time window. So that is a sign for influence from V prime to V, right? So this fu function try to model the proportion for how many, to, to the proportion of this opinion is in how, more, how, how many how many opinions this this post is influenced by his brain? So the upper part we can see is a, first is a specific action performed by user v at time t, and uh, if there exists a friend v prime who performed the same action at time t, v it's a sign of influence from v v prime to v, and divided by the the number of actions all actions performed by v. So this is the pro proportion for these actions which are influenced by its peers. Okay, uh, now we get to the, let me, let me, let me introduce a second part of confirmity, that, that, which is a peer confirmity. The difference from peer confirmity in, with individual confirmity is that the peer confirmity target for a specific user or specific friends of you, V. So this part, uh, Take a similar fa factor, but the the denominator the denominator is different. That is, first uh, we can we can observe some specific function performed by user v prime at time t prime, and the user v follows v v prime to perform the action at t time t, and this the number of such kind of actions is divided by the number of ac all actions performed by v prime. This is a, and, and a, let, let me introduce a sec, the third, third part of conformity is group. The group conformity evaluates the number of actions followed by, uh, we followed, for the number of ac actions we followed is group. Here by A, C, K, T is a tall, is a tall group action. That means all actions performed by more than percentage tall of all users in the group. V belongs to, and it will check all the actions V belongs to, and uh, how many actions V followed these these actions, and divided by uh, all actions in this group. So in for 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 putting all these three type of conformity together, we can model the the influence part in the in, in using such kind of Graph. Let me uh, introduce this graph. How we, we each part why each part is which each part means why y one means y one y two y y three y four means the random variable or probability for user v i to perform some some kind of action. To perform some kind of action, it's the probability for him to perform some kind of action is influenced by is affected by individual conformity by peer conformity by conformity conformity. For for example, let's see we y1. Y1 first y1 is the probability for y for, for v1 to perform some kind of action firstly is affected by its individual conformity. Uh, we denote it as the 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 the, the, the black square. Yeah, but it's affected by his own individual conformity. Besides that, it's also if affected by its peer conformity because V1 is a friend of V2, V3, V4, and uh, V6, right? So the probability for V1 to perform some action is also affected by the peer conformity of this friend. So this peer conformity also affected the result of Y1. Similarly, we, Y1 belongs to three different groups. We mark it as, as blue, three different group. And why V1's action is also affected by the group conformity it, it follows. So, who, so, so the probability for Y1 is affected by both the, the, the green part, the orange part, or blue part. So putting all these three parts together, we can Construct a, a object, objective function like this. Learning the object, objective function using the historical record, we can 
find uh, we can train the the parameters in this function, for example, alpha, beta, gamma, and, and mu can be learned from this object function to maximize the posterior probability. If we learn the the the, the suppose we we have learned the the parameter and parameter from the historical record, and uh, we can use the parameter to evaluate the three kind of conformity for each new node. Uh, given the new node, new node, we also arrive to, to, a, to, to, to a new question, how we can evaluate whether the quantification is good or not. Similarly, in Confluence, they put the, the result into the, down, the same downstreaming task, link prediction. So for the link prediction, they also show a very high significant improve, improvement com compared to the approach without a conformity. And uh, it's also con construct some kind of uh, ablation study to, to test whether we put into only, consider only individual conformity or pure conformity or conf consider all three conformity together. And uh, of course, uh, putting all three kind of conformity together shows the best performance. But among all three different conformity, the group conformity is more important than, than, than the others. Okay. We have already introduced two kind of two different strategies for to, to evaluate the influence, social influence function, right? Then we carry on to the next part, next result, next question. We have already know if you if you if you are given a piece of information, you have no uh, the initial nodes who have adopted the, the information or spread spread the information. And we all we can know how the how large is the area influence affect by the by the information, right? So we can carry on to the next next question. If we, if we, we have a have a, a budget number of seats, and how to select this this set of seats such such that the the, the result influence function is the best is maximized, which is a very important or fundamental task for value marketing. Suppose there's a there's a marketer provided some individual individuals in, in a social network with free product in exchange to for them to spread a good good word about it. It's a it's a very popular usage for very marketing, right? This can be this this question can be modeled formally using the the definition of influence maximization we pr provide in the upper part in this slide. Let's say given a uh, social network is modeled as a G and a positive integer, which is a budget of the size of the seed set as K. So the question is to how we can select a set S of K users from V as a seed set, such that the influence spread of seed set S is maximized. Because we have already know if you, you have a seed, we, we can evaluate the influence function for S. So the question is uh, how you can select the, this kind of S such that the, max, the, 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 the result spread is maximized. Okay, uh, recall that in this tutorial, we focus on the social, social psychology part, so, so I cannot go deep with QM study. So the, the focus here is that we have already know the the fundamental for 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 for, for, for fundamentals the required fundamentals for addressing M question, which is a different model and the influence estimation. These are the two two, two fundamental tools to address M problem. So given the, the both the both tools, how we can address M function, specifically in social net psychology aware away. But before we pull, we, we, we introduce the social psychology strategy, we, we just give a brief idea of how the general M study or how, or how the general, general M solution works. Uh, given you some such, such kind of a, a, a social network, a K, a K and the influence function, the first, the, the most elegant work proposed is probably 
proposed by Kemp uh, about 20 years ago, which is a great, uh, uh, first he, he, he gave a great solution which can provide a uh, result guarantee. The great solution works uh, uh, very simple. Uh, assume we, we have such kind of a network and assume we have k a budget k equal to two. And the graph is simple network. Suppose the, the weights, the, the influence probability all equal to one. Then the great work works as follows. First, calculate the marginal influence of all nodes. Maybe the, the calculation can work in a, in a Montalo simulation way. Denoted as, a, for example, for each node of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we can calculate the marginal influence first. One, once influence can, one can influence three, four, six, seven, and the oneself. So the influence is five, right? So we can list the, the this table. And the first iteration, we select a node with the greatest marginal influence as a seed. The first seed is V1, right? So now we have already got one seed and we have K, the, the number of K seed is K equal to two. So we can select another seed. So next uh, we select the next seed. After, before we select the next seed, we have to recalculate the marginal influence for all the nodes. And the, we updated the, the, the table as a right, right part. Now uh, V2 has, a, has the best marginal influence, influence right? So we have to re, uh, select a V2 into the C side. And now K equal to two. So we end up the, the selection. Uh, besides the, the, the greatest solution or, or the uh, simulation based uh, algorithm, the, we, there's a, exact, another part of solutions based on the, some kind of heuristics. For example, a simple heuristic is based on the degree. Uh, the, the, the most simple solution for heuristic strategy is we can select the most, the, the, the node with the most high degree first uh, and uh, iterate, uh, iterate this process. For, for assume also assume k equal to two, and the first we can see find, find this one have the best uh, degree. So we, we have to select one and the other also, uh, and after that we carry on the selection. Uh, similarly, from both uh, simulation, we have introduced the simulation based uh, gradient approach and the heuristic based uh, approach. Besides simulation based gradient approach, there exist, also exists some kind of sample based gradient approach. They also can pro provide some theoretical guarantee in the result. So here is a roadmap for all the solutions. Okay, we stop here. We carry on to the social psychology part. For social psychology part, recall that the for the influence for the information. For, for the computation of marginal influence, we have to evaluate whether U can influence V due to some kind of influence model or different model. Uh, this kind of different model can be affected by some social psychological aspects. So if we put, in, put into consideration uh, the conformity factor, and recall that we have already, already calculated the influence function, influence score and the conformity score and the casino, I suppose each node has already got its omega value and the five value, then the probability for influence from U to V can be calculated as probability, can be proportional to the times between phi U and omega V. So, so we can model the probability for, for U to influence V or a series of U to influence his friend V as uh, using this function as the yeah, one minus the the product of the, 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 this kind of equation. So following this, we can already we have already taken into account the conformity factor, and uh, based on the conformity factor, we can use it, this model to 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 evaluate whether v can be influenced by u following the. To, in the in the procedure for for computing the the influence function sigma, right? So using this model, we can we can compute the conformity aware influence function. 
uh, based on the confirmative avaric influence function, we can we may arrive to a different result set if compared to those functions without confirmative factor. Here we show a simple example. Uh, first thing we, we show the we still show, show in, in simple example by conf computing conformity and uh, com com compare with without the conformity. The IC model is a uh, uh, named as the independent cutted model, which is popularly used in general M strategy. Uh, it says uh, the each the probability for each edge to user U to influence V is is proportional to an in independent probability probability which is defined. A, uh, defined defined beforehand. So suppose an NC model with probability influence probability 0.5, and X denotes the side of activated activated edges. The sigma V1 can be computed as as this this, this uh, equation. Recall that sigma V1 is the expectation of influence of V1, right? The, for expectation, we have to consider where uh, V1 V V three is activated or not. If V three is activated, then V V four is activated or not. All this probability times the influence for this probability word. So the sigma V one can be calculated in following that equation, and V one, V two, V three, V four, V five. If we also following the same equation, we can get such kind of result. And for if we for, for, for suppose we have a M's problem of k equal to one, we have to select V5 as a C, C node. But what if we have already taken into consideration conformity? Uh, if we take into consideration conformity and following the, the influence probability, we have showed uh, the calculation equation showed in the earlier slides, the five different nodes will get a different sigma listed as a red, red part. In, at this time, if k equal to one, we have to select v1 as a c net, c, c, c node. So k k into conformity and the result will result, lead to different result. So given that, given that result, we can carry on to a, a new solution for the M study based on the casino result. The whole procedure works as follows, so giving you such kind of large network. And uh, we can partition the network to, to, to use using some graph partition study. And uh, we can con conform, compute the conformity for each part of sub subgraph. And we can maintain a, a data structure to efficiently, to use for efficiently to, to select nodes from where. So from which we can efficiently select node. After that, we can select the the the, the list of the list here here shows the expect, expected influence spread. We calculated using the C C square model and their conformity, and following the conformity of your influence maximization solution, we we name the solution as cinema. And for the cinema result, we can show we can find that the cinema shows the best result compared to those result conformity. So for those for those result conformity, they, they only account for six percentage to seven, six per, around six percentage the, the performance for cinema. And uh, within the conformity selection uh, for, for the no for the cinema solution, the, the most time consuming part is the C selection phase. Okay. Uh, we have introduced uh, how we can use Casino to, to, to get a new AMS uh, solution. Besides, uh, besides Cinema, we, there's also exists uh, some other type of AMS studies that take into co consideration conformity. For example, uh, I introduced some of one representative task of, of this is named as GIM. For GIM, he, they use the first model each user using user profile uh, named as AU, which contains, contains D different attributes denoted as a, a, A1U, A2U to a, ADU. Let's see an example. Suppose the, the user can be def defined in six different attributes. Each attribute will 
uh, represent some kind of features for the users. Suppose the, uh, we, we, we see the red, red, red example, there are four, six different use, six different features, the gender, basketball, tennis, for football, movie, by, by, and book. And each user can be a vector of a, a bitwise vector, right? But if gender, for, for example, if a user is one, uh, for the first, uh, First element is one, it means male or female, right? It's a single vector. Besides user profile, besides the user profile, we also define a group profile. The group profile is a one-hot encoding for each group. Here, one-hot encoding, that means the, the bit vector has only one element as one. For example, for, for the basketball group can be represented by the M1 profile. PM1 is a one hot encoding where the second element is one and the rest is zero. Okay, we have now we have a user attribute profile and uh, and also group profile, right? Given user profile and the group profile, as we as consider uh, as we have already got, got Representing each user using a vector, each group as a vector, we can easily calculate the similarity between pairwise users and also paired of user and groups. So, given that we can use the similarity to evaluate the conform conformity to for a user to conform to some friends, for a user to conform to some group, uh, each can be evaluated using the similarity between the corresponding profiles. Well, I just uh, simply introduced uh, the how to they, they, they can compute the for sim similarity between different user is a different, the vector different distance between both. Uh, also similarly user and group can also be used using the distance between the vectors. Besides, besides user similarity and, and uh, group similarity, Note note that we have also we have also got we recall that in IM study we have a piece of information right we have to spread the information so they also evaluated the information as a profile vector so information Q can also be marked by some multiple features as a feature vector and also the information Q the, the difference or similarity between Q and the user can also be used evaluated using the similarity between the vectors. So given all these similarities for the model, if a user V can, you can use inference user V is proportional to the product of all these three different similarities. So uh, we have already, okay, we have the, the probability for you to influence V using the all three type of similarities. And we carry on to the node selection part of this, how we can select node. So arrange, first we arrange groups in a distinguish distinguishing order with respect to size. And uh, we, according to key, assign one seed for each group. And notably, when a group has already got a seed, its neighbor groups will not be allocated any seed in priority. So for this, for, for this example, we show the number of si number of uh, size of each group, and we rank the group according to its size. So I'm five is the is the biggest biggest group which contains sixty different members, right? Next is I'm I'm three. Okay, following this following this process procedure for suppose k equal to two, we have we have following this procedure we have to select seeds from M5 and M M3 respectively, right? Then for each M, M5 and M3, which node we have to select as a seed? For the node selection, Jim, Jim also proposed such kind of uh, intuitions. If a total number of nodes in each group U is involved in, it leads to high cardinality. That means if U can, is probable to influence the a large number of users in the, in the group, the U, if a group has high cardinality and U is probably, the, is probable to influence this group, U should be 
selected first. And uh, also, if there are many users similar to you, similar to user you, you should be selected first. So based on the two intuition, we can propose they propose a rank of users using the using both factors together to to tamper both factors. Um, then the influence for the C set is calculated using the sigma of the ranks for all the nodes in the C set, the S. So let's see the running example. Given the C, given example left side, and suppose we have k equal to two, and suppose uh, suppose uh, for simplicity simplicity we have already calculated the the probability for user u to influence v. Recall that the influence is calculated by the times of three different similarities, right? Suppose we we simpl simplify that it as is zero point five, then the part then the c select part is will result in like, like this. We know that we have a rank of groups according to its size, right? And uh, the first two are M5 and M M3. And for M5, we can define a hypergroup that is connected with M5. We, we, we have M5 and M, M4 is a hypergroup. M3 and M1, M2 is a hypergroup. For each hypergroup, I, we, call, we can calculate the rank for each node. And calculate the rank of each node following the earlier function we have defined. And the, we can find the in, in, in the, the second hypergroup, uh, node four has the best rank. So node four has to be for, selected first. After that, we have to select another node from the hypergroup E. And in hypergroup E, we have nodes, nodes 10, which has the best influence or rank. So the both. We have to for first select four, node node four and second node ten. Uh, after that, it can also show the results of the influence result. But this time, they show the following the gene. In fact, gene is a heuristic based solution. We 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 did not can find any simulation part or simulation part or or, or sample based part to to to. Evaluated the probability for user u to u influence user v. The influence probability is only calculated by the similarity times the, the product of the three similarities. So it's it's uh, it belongs to some kind of heuristic approach. This kind of heuristic approach may run very fast. And this they, they show also besides the efficiency they provided, they also provide a very high effectiveness. So uh, currently, we have shown the two different downstream tasks following the different model, which have been introduced by Ning, and which one is, one is uh, influence function estimation and the one is the influence maximization. maximization. And recall, note that in my part, I focus on the conformity part, and you, if you examine the part uh, in depth, you can find the, the key difference is between this psychology aware IM task and the general IM task or influence function value estimation is the difference on how we can model the influence probability, uh, probability between user U and V. And uh, the rest part for how we can see select the seed is different. It, it is the same, it's almost the similar, similar to the general IM solutions. So for a 10, Attention, atten attenuation, and the conformation bias. I will, I will skip that part. It, you can check it in the corresponding the papers, which follow similar, uh, similar solution parts as the casino, cine uh, cinema, and the GM. For example, for attention atten attenuation, they can follow I LT different model and the change change from LT different model to RLT different model. For following the model, we can simulated the, the influence function influence spread function and the greedy list selected the seeds from C that C set S. So all these all, all these part rest parts of all M solutions or influence function as many editions can be found in, in the following paper. Okay, this is the end of my part. 
So if you have any questions for Hui, feel free to ask. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up the tutorial by looking into the future directions for on this topic. And the good thing about this topic is, as you can see from our review, there are much fewer work on bringing in social psychology into social computing. Okay, so you can imagine of every aspect of social computing solutions that involves groups of individual people can be mapped to a problem where you need psychology theories. Right. So basically, it can trigger rethinking of many existing social computing solutions. And potentially, they have the ability to have more accurate solution compared to existing solutions that do not consider psychology theories at all. This is intuitive because you're taking into human behavior into consideration for modeling your social computing solution. For an example, you can think about community search. Community search has gained quite a few attention in, in recent years, in less than last 10 years or so. Um, you're searching, basically you're searching communities given a query keyword, right? And this particular community is nothing but a group of interacting people. You can think about all existing community search techniques are psychology oblivious. So they do not consider any social psychology theory at all, right? So one way to look into this is that how you can enhance this solution of community search techniques to incorporate psychology theories in their design. And it might lead to a separate, completely different algorithms, different way of finding communities. And you might find that the community you detect using psychology aware community search techniques may be quite different from purely topology based community search detection. Okay. Yeah, another issue you can think about, another problem which is in recent times have gained considerable attention is bias and fairness. There's a lot of research activities in these, and there is separate. Conference on fairness, like fact and so on. Right. This is very relevant to web because you're looking into data which are highly unstructured, generated by people, and implicitly has a lot of biases. And this is one of the problems of using LLM based techniques because they simply cannot figure out the biases. Right. So, in general, it is not uh, exaggeration to say that solutions are typically not informed by psychology theories when it comes to considering bias and fairness. Because bias is inherently a human thing. So you cannot think about bias without thinking about psychology theories related to bias. Right? And this is, again, a very open area to explore. Another example which we have seen at the beginning of our tutorial, we have alluded it several times, is a fake news propagation. So in particular, in this kind of propagation, confirmation bias plays a significant role. There is no solution which is highly accurate in able to detect fake news and estimate the propagation, the influence of fake news. It simply doesn't exist at this point of time. There are many techniques being proposed, but they have their limitations. And what is common is that most of these techniques are not psychology informed, right? So the design is not considering human behavior. So this also has the potential to improve understanding and accuracy of fake news propagation techniques, detection and estimation of their influence. Last one I want to give you an example is social data quality. 
Wikipedia is highly popular, and you can think about Wikipedia as a collaborative editing of documents, right? So when you talk about collaborative edi editing, it means a group of individuals coming into play to edit the documents, and they bring in their biases, conformity, and so on. So there's no study whether on what fraction of Wikipedia documents have biases. Right. And that is a and that impacts data quality. And if it impacts data quality, it has a wide ranging impact downstream. For example, any kind of training data, which is not considering these biases, invariably going to lead to problems in prediction. Right. So data quality comes right at the beginning of any data science platform. The second aspect of uh, research, which is we find is interesting, is that we talked about four theories, confirmatory theory, confirmation bias, interference, and attenuation, simply because these are the theories which have been exploited in recent times in our literature. Does not mean these are the only theories which you can apply. There's a wide range of social psychology theories it's very rich with theories. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. So there are a lot of new theories that you can play with. So if you're a PhD student, this is very open space to work with because you can play with a lot of new theories, come up with interesting models, test them out. I'll give you a couple of examples of this. So there is something called role theory in social psychology, if you are not aware of, which means that roles that people occupy provide the context that shape behavior. So your role in that group of individuals interacting together plays an important role. And you can think about that in the context of, let's say if you consider review process again, there's a area chair or a senior PC or a meta, meta reviewer, right? They occupy a different role compared to reviewers. So the way they influence is different from the way reviewers influence. So rural theory is very prevalent in human society. And this naturally has a potential to contribute to understanding information propagation. We do believe this plays a part in information propagation. Another theory that has not been really explored well in, in our literature of social computing uh, specifically online social computing, is that social impact theory. And what is this? This theory states that amount of influence a person experienced in a group setting is impacted by three things. Strength, which is power or social status of the group. Immediacy, both psychological and physical distance, how close these groups people are, in terms of not only physical distance, but also psychological distance, how close they are in their thinking, in their mental processes. Number of people in the group exerting the influence. Once again, if you look into the literature of social influence as an example of a problem, and you can ex extrapolate that to any other literature in social computing, you won't see papers which really considers this to model social influence. Right. So basically, by looking into topology consistently and ignoring other factors, and somehow we can also consider the keywords associated with uh, nodes, right, the metadata, but those are not behavioral information as such. So we are basically limiting the power of prediction in, with respect to social influence. So this is one more theory that we can play with. This is, I'll just give you two examples. Does not mean there is only two. If you look into psychology, social psychology theory, there are a lot of theories. Some are well-established. Some are still debatable. Like even psychologists disagree among with each other on this. But if you take the more established theories, you can explore a wider space of social computing problem that has not been explored before. 
And now if you go one level higher, we are not limited to social psychology. If you recall that six perspectives of psychology, one of the thing is cognitive. Cognitive psychology essentially studies how people think and process information. And why this is relevant in social computing? Because any social computing analytics technique is, which is implemented, you're showing the results of your technique, it goes to the human. So if you, if you, if you show a social network, large social network, and you said, here is my community search results. And if your social network looks like a hairball because of large number of nodes and edges, nobody can figure it out where your results are, what is the meaning of these results, what is the context of this result with the rest of the network. It's very hard to do that. So th there's an increasing a significant cognitive load on end users in understanding and comprehending your techniques or results. So this is an example where this is not a social psychology problem. This is a cognitive psychology problem where your solution is not designed by considering cognitive psychology aspects of your solution. We are giving a tutorial in Sigma 24 next month in Santiago, which explores or reviews works that intersects between cognitive psychology and data management. So there are more work in data management with respect to this than in social computing. And you can, you're free to take a look at this paper and the talk. The last issue I would like to highlight is, you know, psychology, the traditional way of doing psychology research is basically you have a group of volunteers that could be online or offline, and they survey, they look, they observe their behaviors, they survey, take feedback through surveys and all that to understand certain psychology theories or establish new theories. We cannot do that at the web scale, right? It's just impossible to, have, to do surveys for 1 million users plus, right? But... Most of these psychology theories, because they study a very small uh, number of users, right? They are not based in many cases on based on quantitative models, right? So because we have access to millions of users, can we model psychology theories at scale? I mean, can we, take a data-driven approach to influence well-established theories. For example, there are early effects of modeling confirmation bias and conformity as you have seen it in this tutorial, but these are all early works. Naturally, there are ways to improve them, there are ways to go further to this, but what happens is when you build quantitative model, then you can do few things. First, you can quantify, all these. Second, you can even validate whether some of the long established psychology theory, does it hold in a massive online setting? Right? And the challenge is all we have is the structure of the network and the data generated by individual users. That's all we have. Their interactions and the structure. As we mentioned earlier in our tutorial, nobody is going to write, okay, I am being, I'm conforming to someone explicitly. Nobody is going to write in their conversation, okay, I have this confirmation bias. So you cannot simply look for keywords and extrapolate. So the challenge lies where you either, how much you can push to extract these behaviors to model certain psychology theories and see whether they actually hold in online settings. So all the majority of the work in psychology has been in a small group setting where they try to understand the theory. But we are assuming here that all these theories probably also hold in online setting, but maybe some established one do as we discussed. 
But there may be some theories which they don't. And a quantitative way of modeling can help in bridging these two. So in conclusion, what I would like to highlight is that this particular the the this particular tutorial is basically giving you a novel paradigm on psychology informed design of social computing solution and puts you to think about the role psychology theories can play in designing social computing solutions. As you know that large majority of our solutions are all rich with computer science theories, but not with psychology theories. Okay, so it's a, this research is very much interdisciplinary. It's not possible for many of us to be expert in psychology theory. So you really need to talk to people from social psychology domain to, to be productive and make good contributions. So the tutorial gives you a paper, right? And this content to review relevant work. So you can jumpstart by just simply going into this paper where it basically captures all the major represented works. Okay, so we will stop here. Thank you for your attention on this. And if, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask us. So we have around 15 minutes time left to take questions. I'm not sure whether there are questions in the online. Okay. All right, if it's not, then we can take it offline or you can contact us anytime you want.